What's good, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Jay Daisy here with the Jay Daisy Gaming Channel. Here with Day of Infamy. This is a World War II first-person shooter that is out on Steam. It just came out, oh, I think a week or two ago. I'll look that up as I'm talking here. Uh, March 23rd, 2017. So it just came out today. Oh, wow, I'm ahead of the curve. Um, I think if you bought it, you got a day early access to it, or maybe I just downloaded it last night very easily. Um, but for the past 24 to 48 hours, this game has kind of been a thing of I enjoy playing a lot. <laughs> I think I've played roughly three or four hours of it in the past couple days. Um, it's a really good first-person shooter to me. Um, it's on sale right now for 25% uh, off at 14 dollars um, regular price of $20. Uh, I think that is a really, really good price for this. Um, also, I want to point out that World War war games are kind of making a comeback. Um, I'm going to blame uh, Battlefield 1 for that. I noticed this last night that uh, this came out. Um, also, Rising Storm 2, which I hopefully will be able to get a video out on. It won't let me play it right now. Something's missing. I, I'm waiting desperately for a patch. I hear really good things about it. That's a Vietnam shooter. Um, Steel Dreams or Steel, Steel Something also just came out today. That is a RTS of World War. Um, so, like, in the span of a week, three different war games have come out. Um, some first-person shooters, some RTSs. Um, and this is the only one I've been able to play. I think I've tried that Steel Dream or Steel something um, earlier today, and I just I, I wasn't getting it. I didn't. Uh, my mind wasn't Steel Division. That's what it was. Normandy. Um, my mind just wasn't wrapping around what I need to be doing, so I just stopped and went back to this. Frankly, um, and this is a really good for. This has a lot of the aspects that I really like in first-person shooters that a lot of people don't like in first-person shooters. Um, it's kind of one of those. It's a bunch of those aspects that drew me to Rainbow Siege Six. Um, it's hard hitting, it's very competitive, um, and it's very accurate to a sense. Um, there is a very clear objective. Um, you were either, there's, it's still fairly new, so I'm still hoping that it gets updates, and there's, still, there's definitely some things I don't like. Um, you're either attacking or defending, pretty much. Um, there's no, like, capture the flag, there's no something like that. There, I think there's, like, destroy the objective or something like that, too. Um, and the way you get onto online games is kind of weird. It, uh, you just kind of, like, select a genre you want to be placed in, and I'll hopefully find you a match. I did get dropped once into a match that was literally just me and another guy running around killing each other, because, uh, it just, that's the way it, the matchmaking works. So that definitely, definitely needs some help. Um, but you get put in good matches most of the time. Um, and yeah, you're either pushing or defending. And uh, you're either Axis or Allies, the best I've been able to tell. I've never seen, uh, you know, Canada versus U.S. or anything like that. Um, but it has very clear objectives. Either hold this or don't hold this. And if you're playing on hold this, if you're on defense, on most of the game times, you'll have five obje or three, three objectives plus the main one. So you have A, B, and C, and then your last ditch effort. Um, and if the enemy overruns one of those, you now have to fall back to the next one. There's no going back to that first one. You've lost it. And you have to either run out the clock or um, all the game modes have, uh, we'll call them tickets, or but they're called waves in the game. So the attacking starts off with more waves than the defending. So what that means is on, if you're on the defense and you lose a percentage of your squad, I'm assuming is what it is, you have to have one of your people run back to a regroup position. Once they hit that, everyone that's dead gets to respawn. And that'll use one of your waves. Um, for the attack, I think it is just a time-based thing or a percentage-based thing. I don't think there's any real... Uh, nothing I could tell that controlled it like the regroup. You just A bunch of you will respawn at one time. Once a certain amount of you have died, they'll use one of your waves. Um, you get waves for if you kill a bunch of people in a succession, you take a point... Um, and I think there's one other way to get uh, those waves back. Um, so if you're the attacking, you're really desperate to take that first point once you hit zero waves, because then you get another five waves, and you can keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And the final objective is no, is like a radio station you just have to destroy. So you literally just get in there and blow it up, and you're, you've won. Um, defense, you're just holding them back. Hold the, hold the timer. Um, on some maps, there is definitely a clear advantage to the defense team. And then other maps, um, 
some of the objectives that are just like out in the open and it's really hard to defend. Um, I think that does a really good job for differentiating attacking and defending. Also, it has um, one of my favorite things, which is flamethrowers. <laughs> Um, I don't, can't think of another multiplayer game that lets you have a fucking flamethrower and just burn people, and it's pretty gruesome. Um, another thing I really love about this game that some people won't like, um, is when you die, you're just dead. You, a bullet, if a bullet just comes across from the other side of the map and just hits you and you're dead. It, there's no kill cam, there's no kill feed, there's nothing. I really like that. I like that sense of you're just dead. You don't need to know anything else. You're dead. You can't call out to your team being like, he was in the left, unless you saw them standing there. You know, you round a corner and they're just standing there like, what the hell are you doing? Um, <clears throat> I really like that. I'm sure a lot of people won't. This game just gives me Medal of Honor feels the whole time I'm playing it. It just feels like a, a like a original Medal of Honor. This just gives me multiplayer Medal of Honor tingles, and I think that's what I'm really drawn to it for. Um, also, I'm a big history buff and gun buff, so this is fun for me. Um, there is a progression system that I am slowly climbing, so I can't really speak on too much about that, but it is there. Um, I pretty much am either a heavy machine gunner or uh, occasion flamethrower, just because those are fun for me. Um, with the machine gun, you're also, uh, the, with the machine gun, you're, it's a lot of spray and pray. That's what I made me think of this. You don't have a ammo count unless you're the flamethrower. Then you have a very distinct ammo count of 500, and as you use it, it goes down. All the other guns, it just tells you mags. Um, there is a way to circumvent that, I found out, that if you reload before your mag is empty, you don't lose a mag. Um, I don't know if that keeps that mag, but it's only partially used. But yes, or if you're a rifleman with a bolt action, you only have 35 rounds or whatever. So you have a very distinct number of ammo, and I have ran out of ammo, um, and just had to use my sidearm. Luckily, I had my sidearm because some of the classes just don't have a sidearm. Um, like the heavy LMG I often play does not have a sidearm. You're just then you just have your knife and a smoke grenade, and you pray something happens. Um, you can pick up weapons, but you are limited in that. I believe I've never actually picked them up, but I've seen people in spectator pick them up. Um, I just I just never have. I you die a lot in this game, so be prepared for that. Don't expect to just roll into this with just Macho Man Randy Savage and just barrel through this. You're not you're not going to do well. Um, another shortcoming of the game, since uh, I've been kind of boosting it here for a while, um, there's only a few maps so far, probably about eight or nine, um, and they are all very well designed. Do not get me wrong. There's several routes to every objective, several hidey holes, and all that good jazz. Um, I would like to see more, though, frankly. That's just me. I like having map diversity. I like seeing a couple more objectives thrown in or a more precise matchmaking. Um, that's definitely a, a drawback to me. Um, there is, like, a practice and a training, so that's all there. There is there is the practice, which we could call the single player, which is just you versus bots. Um, that's where I just played around for the first, like, 20 30 minutes or so just to get the feel of all the different classes and stuff there are commanders so there's several different classes which i really really like and there's commanders now you're not an op because they can call in airstrikes and stuff like that which are really well done and you're not some op just calling in bombardments you have to have a radio man run up to you and use their radio to call in the airstrike you can't just bomb people you have to have work with your squad to have a radio man um same with the LMGs. You can't just go running. Well, you can just. I've done them plenty. But you can't. You shouldn't, as a group, just go running off in all different directions. You should try and stay together. You know, using an LMG to lay down suppressing fire as your riflemen and infantrymen push up, secure the area, then move everyone up um, with a flamethrower, you know, clearing out corners and stuff. Um, commander and radio man bombing the crap out of, you know, bunkers to either cover support or what have you. Um, but you should really be working together. I personally have never used voice chat um, in this game, and I am reluctant to because mo all the times I've had people using voice chat in this game, it is the same typical reason I don't play voice chat because it's just bigots and 12-year-old kids spouting words they don't even know the meaning of, and it makes me very sad. But what do you do? So... When I say work with your team, I mean 
for me, that means working non-verbally with my team is just moving with them and trying to interpret what they do. That's how I've played most of my first-person shooters, in all honesty. This is no exception to that. Um, like I said, I don't play many first-person shooters, so when one comes along that grabs my attention, um, it's a really cool thing, and this one really has, especially for 20 bucks, um, or 15 like it is now, I really think this is a definitely, definitely, definitely um, worth a look if you're a fan of World War II or first-person shooters or those early Medal of Honor games. I really kind of highly recommend this. Um, I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, I think a lot of you too, you people will, you people, you, you guys will as well. Um, I can't really think of anything more to say about it. You should, I, I would recommend checking it out. Um, but as always, that's just my opinion. You can always, you know, get to me in the comment section or on any of the social medias that are linked down in the description box. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, remember, we're all in this together. I will promise, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.